we got to work on that music, guys, a little <laughs> faster. Um, you may not have heard of Empire K-12 before. Um, we're a small nonprofit in DC that we support charter schools that aim to become more data-focused and data-driven. Um, so given our background, for those of the people who are in the room, and some of the charter schools are here, actually, um, it'll be no surprise that our design is very data-centric. Um, we believe that state school accountability systems have two main goals. One is to provide information to uh, the public about the school quality and to also identify schools um, and pair them with appropriate rewards, sanctions, and supports. Um, our proposed ESSA design encourages states to be innovative with the data they already have while pursuing the new creative metrics like the other ones that are proposed in um, proposals today. Uh, we focus in particular on student growth and student growth gaps, and we also offer an advanced data model to help match schools with the right state-supported uh, systems. Uh, here is an example of our public-facing comprehensive index score system. Uh, we embrace growth uh, as measured by uh, median growth percentiles, and we do an examination of growth gaps between high and low achieving subgroups. The lower the gap, growth gap, the higher the score. Um, our overall growth and growth gap scores combine to make 60% of the whole total score. Again, we are focused on growth. Um, and then we also have a measure for English language proficiency um, and growth and a behavior measure that um, looks at uh, suspensions as an indicator. Um, we don't think that this is necessarily the best indicator for students, uh, for school environment, but it is a measure that is collected annually by the Department of Ed um, and has historical data that states can use while looking at and exploring other valid and reliable measures of school environment. And we also look at achievement growth and achievement gaps as um, typically are done. Um, and then that way we also give half credit for students who are not meeting the college and career ready. Full credit for those who are meeting it and half credit for those who are not meeting it. Um, we've, this school here and in their example is kind of like an average school and we think a great school would have an index score of 70. Um, in terms of our uh, proposal of our advanced model, we, um, we would take the index scores and we would take a slew of additional data that we have about schools and combine them into one comprehensive data model and looking at whether a school would be likely to be great in the next three years. Think Moneyball or think the, I guess as Sherman put them, braid dead algorithms of Google and Amazon, um, but we'd be using all the data that we have about schools to project whether they're going to be great in the future. And we believe that projecting whether they're going to be great in the future allows schools um, or allows the state to actually identify and better align their policies and programs with the school's true needs. Um, imagine a data-driven accountability model that provides specific tangible next steps to the schools that are struggling and identify schools who are beating the odds so we can study and then identify what other data elements we should be collecting about these great schools who are beating the odds. So we hope our designs focus on student growth and a data-driven model will help states better support school environment and we thank Mr. Petrelli and Forum Institute and the judges for being here to present today. All right, well done, Josh. Very good. Boy, Tony brought up uh, his dad. You just brought up my dad, Mr. Petrelli. What was that? All right. <laughs> okay, all right, Andy. Well, my dad is also watching Home. Hi, Dad. Hi, Mom. Oh, excellent. <laughs> Which is why you're not going to throw your dad under the bus like Tony yes. just did. Yes, they should be the first two love that come up. Yes, and he would be able to. I bet your dad could understand Sherman's. So. Yes. <laughs> he was a math teacher. Oh, yeah. Oh, so he would, actually. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh. All right. <laughs> we won't count this time against you. Andy. <laughs> okay, so. Mr. Charter Guy, this is a, a proposal ripped from one of the best uh, charter accountability systems in the country. So what, what's your take here? Ish. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I, want, I wanted to love it, but um, I think that schools do a whole lot of things other than test scores. Citizenship, passing on communities' values, they're historically important, and on and on and on. Um, Sherman's like line about brain dead algorithms is like echoing in my ears. Like this is really, 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 really algorithmic, really data heavy. It's, um, it's like um, we have computerized our schools. Can you give me any confidence that this is more than schools are just, uh, kids are more automatons. They are more than just the generation of achievement data. Yeah, well, saying that his Twitter handle is data nerd. Okay, yeah. this is no, yes, that's so, fine. And, and, uh, I mean, I think that while focus on growth is really less about just achievement, but also um, when we were looking at the regulations and what to do on, like, we love the PMF and, and the Public Charter School Board, and that it looks like it. Yeah, so it's the public, it's the performance management framework for the charter schools, and it includes a v additional 
indicators around student re-enrollment rates, um, it includes attendance and um, class observations from um, the University of Virginia. So like, we believe that these are all great elements. It's just how do states do that at a states that are bigger than DC at a wide level in a valid and reliable way. And so we came to the conclusion like that's really hard to do. So temporarily we only have a couple of measures, but we think that an index score system that includes additional measures that are valid and reliable and can be done in a statewide level are important and should be included. And we would include them in our index model and then ultimately include them as part of how are we projecting a great school in the future and then aligning those uh, state supports to the appropriate schools. And this was something that many of the designs, really almost all 26 of them had uh, a lot of this focus on saying, here are the data, the indi indicators we're going to use to grade schools, but we're going to have another set of indicators that we're also going to report on report cards because we think they're important information. Maybe they're not totally fully baked yet, or we're not quite sure if they're valid and reliable yet, or we're still working them out. Uh, so they don't get bumped up to that tier yet. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask you one question, Josh? Uh, another thing that a lot of people did, including you, was on the proficiency piece, on the academic achievement piece, you were saying, we're not going to just look at the proficiency, literally at, at the uh, proficiency rates at proficient. We're going to give partial credit for, for basic or advanced credit for advanced. Uh, why is that important? Well, so looking at, in DC we take the park, and so we looked at students on the park assessment and that they needed to be roughly at about the 60th to 70th percentile nationally to be at that college and career ready level four benchmark. And while we want all of our kids to be at that benchmark, it's gonna take a while to get there. So if we are only focusing on level four students, we worry about whether schools actually are just focusing on bubble kids getting up to the top, while we really want, if they're not at college and career ready, to at least be approaching those standards and at the next level down. So we're wanting to encourage schools to get their students at that point as well. Okay, very well said. Big round of applause for Josh Boots. Thank you. We're going to do our voting. Again, as Andy said, a very data-heavy model on this one, but a big focus on growth and a big focus uh, on making sure that the schools are focused on all kids, not just the bubble kids. The voting is now open. <laughs> Boy, somebody is fast off the mark with their hated every time. Very <laughs> impressive. I guess they're motivated. All right, we're going to, who should we start with this time? We're going to start with Joanne. Okay, let's give it a little more time. Like it, love it, hate it. I think it would be illegal. Okay. This one, uh, interesting. Interesting patterns that come up here. Not as many hate it, not as many love it. People like it. Okay, Joanne, tell us what you think. I'm in the like it category. There we go. I'm in the like it category um, as well. I very much like the growth emphasis. I don't think the behavior section is rich enough, and I do think there are some ways, even if it's not valid and reliable, to get the things that matter to be um, on the scoreboard. And the one thing that I worry a little bit about is the will the school be great in the future metric is a really interesting one, but the thing I'm more interested in is is the school improving and what can we do through the accountability system that incents schools to continuously improve? So it's not so much the money ball like will it be great, it's what do we need to do to make it great? So it sort of was on its way to something I thought was great, but I'm not sure it got all the way there. <laughs> okay, very well said. Charlene, we'll go with you next. I'm going to go ahead and go with the love it hmm. um, for similar reasons, actually. I, in, I really liked the idea of an innovative use of already existing data um, and particularly looking at things that aren't always uh, something that are examined in these kinds of accountability systems. Um, in particular, I liked what we've been calling the soft data, looking at teacher retention, uh, quality, student discipline data. Um, so I'm really intrigued and I'd like to see those details that Joanne was talking about. Okay, Tony? So I was a solid like it. Mm -hmm. um, again, I love the idea of, of using growth. Uh, I was very intrigued by that. I would tell you that I was a little concerned there wasn't more proficiency. I would, I would say had we had a little bit more proficiency in there, I, I could have gotten to, to a higher level. I would also tell you I just found it incredibly complicated and heavy. I mean, I, I was tired reading this one. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this was probably the most uh, sophisticated of all of them, and uh, 
my technocratic like government worker central administrator side loved the heck out of this like this makes a whole lot of sense from the point of view of someone at the top of a system who needs to make sense of a bunch of things centrally my concern is that there would be a whole lot of teachers a whole lot of parents who would see their scores kicked out of the system and not feel that their school and their community was at all reflected in what the algorithm produced um, which concerns me so I'm in the like it category okay very well done round of applause for Josh and for our